In this video, you will learn how to assemble your V3600 or 4600 boat lift. This will complement other detailed information provided in Flo's written assembly instructions and owner's manual. Before getting started, it is important to have a dock system layout. Our designer dock tool is ideal to help you lay out and visualize the dock system prior to assembly and installation. We recommend that you torque the nuts to the specification, not the bolts. Place parts and fasteners in their designated locations prior to each step. Before tightening the fasteners, measure from corner to corner, then the distance between the corner posts above the frame beam and at the top of the corner posts, to ensure that your lift is square. Make sure your lift is level and square before installing the V-braces. Assemble the cradle clamps with the given nuts and bolts, before installing it onto the cradle beam. Use a marker to denote fasteners, which have been tightened to the specified torque. In order to do the assembly, you will need the following tools. The blocking material may be anything, 10 to 15 inches in height. We recommend using 5-gallon buckets, jack stands, blocks, or sawhorses. You will need two for each side, or four in total. The blocking material is used to support the lift during the assembly in steps one and two. Warning, do not use an impact wrench to adjust the easy level legs. Applying too much force to the easy level legs will damage the mechanism. Do not adjust any easy level leg more than two inches at one time. Alternate between all legs until your lift is level. If you do not adhere to these recommendations, it may result in poor lift performance and damage to lift components. Do not use a corded drill to adjust the easy level legs. Use of a corded drill may cause electrocution. Set the 121 inch lift beams onto your blocking material. On corner A, attach the inner frame clamp and the outer sheave frame clamp to the beam using a 1 half by 3 inch bolt, 2 half inch washers, and a half inch nylock nut. In the lower hole, attach the clamps, using a 1 half by 4 inch bolt, and a half inch washer. Hand tighten the nuts only. Do not torque until all the nuts and bolts have been installed. Next, attach the inner frame clamp, and the outer frame sheave clamp to each other, using two 1 half by 1 and 3 quarters inch bolts, four half inch washers, and two half inch nylock nuts. On corner B, attach the inner frame clamp and the lower outer frame clamp to the beam using two one half by three inch bolts, four half inch washers, and two half inch nylock nuts. Next, attach the inner frame clamp and the lower outer frame clamp to each other using two one half by one and three quarters inch bolts, four half inch washers, and two half inch nylock nuts. On corner C, attach the inner frame clamp and the lower outer frame clamp to the beam using two 1 half by 3 inch bolts, 4 half inch washers, and two half inch nylock nuts. Next, attach the inner frame clamp and the lower outer frame clamp to each other using two 1 half by 1 and 3 quarters inch bolts, four half inch washers, and two half inch nylock nuts. On corner D, attach the inner frame clamp and the lower outer frame clamp to the beam using a one half by three inch bolt, two half inch washers, and a half inch nylock nut. In the lower hole, attach the clamps using a one half by four inch bolt and a half inch washer. Next, attach the inner frame clamp and the lower outer frame clamp to each other using two one half by one and three quarters inch bolts, four half inch washers, and two half inch nylock nuts. Now, attach the 96-inch side frame beams. On corner B, use two 1 half by 3 and a half inch bolts, four half inch washers, and two half inch nylock nuts. Make sure that the bolt heads are facing towards the inside of the lift, as shown. Repeat this same process on corners C and D. On corner A, Use two one half by three and a half inch bolts, four half inch washers, and two half inch nylock nuts. 
Make sure that the bolt heads are facing towards the inside of the lift, as shown. The frame beams must be in this orientation, before continuing. Next, locate the corner posts. Slide the corner posts into their corresponding corner. The carriage bolt heads must face the inside of the lift. And the nuts must face the outside of the lift. The water depth stickers and drive bolts must face out on the front and rear of the lift. Make sure to butt the clamp up to the corner post tabs. Attach the sand pads to the bottom of the posts using a half inch by three and three quarters inch bolt and a half inch nylock nut. Torque to 25 foot pounds. Use the drive bolts in your drill to adjust the height of the legs. Check to make sure the frame is square before any bolts are torqued. The frame beam clamps must be tightened in the proper sequence. If the bolts are not tightened in the correct sequence, the frame beam clamps will be seated poorly. This may result in poor lift performance and damage to lift components. Start with corner D. First, make sure that the corner is square. Then, torque the highlighted bolt to 60 foot-pounds. The lower bolt is not torqued until later. Then, torque the highlighted bolts to 45 foot-pounds. Finally, torque the highlighted bolts to 45 foot-pounds. Next, move to corner A. First, make sure that the corner is square. Then, torque the highlighted bolt to 60 foot-pounds. The lower bolt is not torqued until later. Then, torque the highlighted bolts to 45 foot-pounds. Finally, torque the highlighted bolts to 45 foot-pounds. Then, move to corner C. First, make sure that the corner is square. Then, torque the highlighted bolts to 60 foot-pounds. Then, torque the highlighted bolts to 45 foot-pounds. Finally, torque the highlighted bolts to 45 foot-pounds. Now, move to corner B. First, make sure that the corner is square. Then, torque the highlighted bolts to 60 foot-pounds. Then, torque the highlighted bolts to 45 foot-pounds. Finally, torque the highlighted bolts to 45 foot-pounds. You may now remove the blocking material. Find the center line on the frame between corner C and D. Next, find the center line of the V-brace clamp. Match the center line of the clamp with the center line on the frame. Ensure that the left side of the V-brace clamp is on the inside of the lift. Attach the two V-braces to the clamps using a 3 8 by 3 inch bolt and a 3 8 inch nylock nut. Hand tighten only. Do not torque. Next, slide the upper V-brace bracket onto corner post C. Attach the other end of the V-brace to the bracket using a 3 8 by 3 and a half inch bolt and a 3 8 inch nylock nut. Hand tighten only. Do not torque. Slide the upper, outer V-brace bracket onto corner post D. Attach the other end of the V-brace to the bracket using a 3 8 by 3 and a half inch bolt and a 3 8 inch nylock nut. Hand tighten only. Do not torque. Ensure that the corner posts are square. Now you may torque the bolts. First, torque the highlighted bolts to 35 foot-pounds. Now, torque the upper bolts to 35 foot-pounds. Find the center line on the frame between corners A and B. Next, find the center line of the V-brace clamp. Match the center line of the clamp with the center line on the frame. Ensure that the left side of the V-brace clamp is on the inside of the lift. Attach the two V-braces to the clamps using a 3 8 by 3 inch bolt and a 3 8 inch nylock nut. Hand tighten only. Do not torque. Next, slide the upper V-brace bracket onto corner post B. Attach the other end of the V-brace to the bracket using a 3 8 by 3 and a half inch bolt and a 3 8 inch nylock nut. Hand tighten only. Do not torque. Slide the upper, outer V-brace bracket onto corner post A. 
Attach the other end of the V-brace to the bracket using a 3 8 by 3 and a half inch bolt and a 3 8 inch nylock nut. Hand tighten only. Do not torque. Ensure that the corner posts are square. Now you may torque the bolts. First, torque the highlighted bolts to 35 foot-pounds. Now, torque the upper bolts to 35 foot-pounds. Next, locate the cradle lift clamp. Slide a half-inch nut into the cradle clamp. Thread a half-inch by two-inch bolt into the clamp and nut, just until the bolt catches the nut. Do not tighten. On the other seven cradle clamps, slide a half-inch nut into the cradle clamp. Thread a half-inch by one and a half-inch bolt into the clamp and nut, just until the bolt catches the nut. Do not tighten. Place the side cradle, beam A, so that it aligns with corner posts A and B. The upward leveling cable is placed on corner B. And the downward leveling cable is placed on corner A. Place the side cradle, beam B, so that it aligns with corner posts C and D. The upward leveling cable is placed on corner C. And the downward leveling cable is placed on corner D. On corner D, take the end cradle and slide two cradle clamps onto the beam. Then, place the cradle, U-clamp, on top of the end cradle. Slide the cradle clamps over top of the cradle, U-clamp. Hand tighten the bolts to hold everything in place. Do not torque. On the other side of the end cradle, corner A, slide one cradle clamp onto the beam. Followed by the cradle lift clamp. Place the cradle, U-clamp, on top of the end cradle. Slide the cradle clamp over top of the cradle, U-clamp. On beam B, take the end cradle and slide two cradle clamps onto the beam. Place the cradle U-clamp on top of the end cradle. Slide the cradle clamps over top of the cradle U-clamp. Repeat on the other side. Make sure that there is a quarter inch gap between the UHMW strip and all of the corner posts. Ensure that the surface of the cradle beams is flush with the surface of the U-clamp. On beam B, the cradle clamp should be the same distance from the end on both sides. On corner D, attach the cable end to the lift frame using a 1 half by 4 inch bolt, 2 half inch washers, and half inch nylock nut. Torque to 60 foot-pounds. Repeat this on corner post A. Torque to 60 foot-pounds. On corner B, install the other cable end, using a 1 half by 2 inch bolt and a half inch nylock nut. Torque to 45 foot-pounds. Repeat this same process on corner post C. On corner post D, attach the cable end using a 1 half by 2 inch bolt and a half inch nylock nut. Torque the bolt to 45 foot-pounds. Next, you will need to locate the front cable sheave and the cable holder. Wrap the cable around the cable sheave, followed by the cable holder to hold the cable in place. Now, slide on a 1 half by 2 inch bolt and half inch nylock nut to hold everything in place. Make sure that the cable holder is installed at 120 degrees, as shown. Next, take the cable end and secure it in place with a 1 half by 2 inch bolt and half inch nylock nut. Torque the nuts to 45 foot pounds. Ensure that the surface of the cradle beams is flush with the surface of the U clamp. Now torque the bolts on the cradle clamps and the cradle lift clamp to 45 foot pounds. Place the caps on the corner posts. The next step is to add the winch to your lift. Please, note that the winch assembly is sold separately. For an instructional video on how to install your manual or electric winch, please go to flowinternational.com. Your boat lift is now assembled. Thank you for choosing Flow. Please consult your local dealer if you need additional assistance.